speaking of the Ferguson protests, there have been a lot of media coverage. Uh, uh, and uh, let me start that over here. <laughs> speaking of the protests in Ferguson, Missouri, there's been a lot of media coverage on the heavy-handed, almost ham-handed, or almost ham-fisted response to the protesters from the police. And uh, more disturbing accounts have come out from two journalists that were targeted and arrested by the police. Now, two journalists, journalists uh, Wesley Lowry of the Washington Post and the Huffington Post's Ryan Riley, were at a local McDonald's cha charging up their cell phones uh, and writing up uh, some of their pieces uh, about the coverage of the protests when a SWAT team came in and arrested them or tried to get them to vacate the area first. And when that SWAT officer came in to try and do that, uh, I believe it was Wes Lowry uh, pulled out his phone and began to record them. Uh, we've got some of the video. We're going to look at that. Let's go. I'm working on it. Stop videotaping. Let's grab our oh, stuff and go. Some of to videotape you, sir. Hurry up. Let's go. Please don't make her go to me. Let's go. Uh, you see me working. Please do not tell me not to use my It's time to go. Let's go. Please not leave a gun. We're down about 45 seconds. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm trying to ask questions. Let's go. Can I move my car? You can move your car. Your car's out here. Let's go. It is. That's what I was asking. You didn't have time. Let's go. 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 After that clip ended, of course, uh, Lowry actually reported that he was shoved into a, show, a soda machine, uh, and then an officer also slammed Riley, his uh, cohorts, head against the glass when they didn't go out the right door. So, as far as I know, I thought uh, recording the police was legal. Didn't seem like it, they respected that uh, ability to record police very much, now did they? Now, here's something that was a little bit more disturbing. Uh, uh, Lowry wrote an account about this uh, in the Huffington po or in the Washington Post, I'm sorry, uh, and it went like this. It said, quote, as I turned, my backpack, which was slung over my shoulder, began to slip. I said, officers, let me just gather my bag. As I did, one of them said, okay, let's take him. Now, this was after the recording was done. Multiple officers grabbed me. I tried to turn my back to them to assist them in arresting me. I dropped my things from my hands. He put his hands behind his back, and he said, my hands are behind my back. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. At which point one officer said, you are resisting. Stop resisting. What are your thoughts on this, Stephen? It's just, it, it amazes me, this entire story was it just seems like if the SWAT member, if the SWAT team kind of needed to clear out that McDonald's for whatever reason, there didn't seem to be a real reason, then they could have approached that a hell of a lot better. Just like, look, guys, you're going to need to kind of move. There's a situation. But they came in aggressively. It's like, right, you've got 45 seconds. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It, it, just, it was just harassment. And the whole, like, the fact that the reporter there was trying to cover up his cell phone, because obviously he knew if the... If the SWAT team there thought that he was being recorded, then he would have smashed that phone up. You knew that would have happened, and you know that the journalists would have been given no respect, kind of no freedom of the press they would have had there. It was atrocious. I mean, in in one of the reporters' kind of stories, he says, you know, he constantly asked for the that particular SWAT member's ID number or name, and that that sol well, I was about to say soldier. Then it's a Freudian slip because he was dressed as a soldier. Um, you know, refuse to give that name, and they're not legally allowed to do it. If someone asks for their ID number, you you have to give it as a form of identi identification. Otherwise, anyone could be a, kind of pretend to be SWAT. It's just outrageous. I and mean, I think the funniest thing as well is that when they were arrested, you know, he talks about how he says I wasn't resisting, and then the cops say, Oh, you are resisting. Um, when both reporters were fl slung in the back of a police van, um, there's a member of the clergy in there as well, and he's just thinking, but like. 
why why have they arrested kind of like priests and vicars and stuff? Like what what sort of hassle were they going to be causing? The it, it's just outrageous this entire scenario. And uh, uh, another account, um, well, basically, uh, after they were arrested, they were in there for a little while. I don't remember how long they were actually in there for. I don't recall that. But they were released without any sort of paperwork, and they were never charged. So they didn't. They obviously didn't do anything wrong, and were still arrested just for being in a McDonald's. That's look. This it's complete insanity. What's going on here? Uh, journalists getting arrested and shut down for no reason. Uh, once again, you know, you've got, and, and we'll get into some uh, uh, more egregious things of what's going on. There have been reports of officers aiming their weapons at peaceful protesters. That's the kind of stuff that they don't want getting out. And so they're going to silence the media. And uh, I, I was talking to, uh, uh, I was actually talking to Tom on. Uh, one of our one of our fans. Uh, he's also got a show on his on his radio show. Uh, Some say info. I was talking to him, and we were talking a little bit about this. And something that they said, either one of his, either he or one of his guests, they didn't give a shit until the main un, until members of the the press were actually arrested because a lot of these live streamers were also being detained and arrested and things like this. But they didn't give a shit. A lot of people didn't give a shit until the bigger media figures were uh, harassed. So I'm not sure I quite, I, I mean, entirely buy it. But once again, it does. It is kind of funny that they were released without any charges. Well, I mean, there are some I mean, bloggers the, and live streamers still in jail. Yeah, I mean, one of the best quotes is that um, when the I think it was a Los, Los Angeles Times reporter. He found out two of his colleagues had been arrested, so he phoned up the police chief. And the police chief found out that he'd arrested two prominent reporters. You have the Huffington Post and the Washington Post. They're big names sort of thing. And the police chief's quote was, oh, God. He instantly knew that that's going to be another massive headache for them. And as soon as he found out, um, you know, he said that the riot police were from St. Louis County and likely, quote, didn't know any better. And so he instantly knew, you know, you know, arresting prominent reporters, that's going to be a problem. And that's where they were released straight away. You know, I'm, I'm sure there probably are some live stream bloggers who are still probably in a holding cell for no good reason. And, okay, there's an argument to be made that bloggers aren't necessarily reporters, and that's a whole different issue. But, yeah, you're right that the fact, really, the only reason these two were released were because they were prominent journalists. Yeah, there's a reason I stopped broadcasting from McDonald's. Um, this uh, this the whole situation, man. Like we talk about the militarization of police, uh, but seeing that video, it, it just speaks so much more uh, profoundly than pictures. That even pictures of them, like on top of armored personnel carriers, you know, in full gear. Like when you see it in video, and you've got that just that that sound of a what sounds like a mild mannered officer speaking to another person who sounds just like you. Like, these aren't people, like, yelling back and forth in district, you know, languages in a, in a war zone. Like, these are two U.S. citizens talking to one another, and one of them looks like he's out of an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. It, it's just, it's completely unreal and, and baffling. Um, you know, I've always kind of uh, laughed about the, the beat cops in the U.K. Uh, over on uh, Stevens' uh, home turf. Like, you know, they don't carry uh, deadly weapons. And uh, I always thought, like, oh, man, like, that would be just a disaster in America because we've got, you know, so many more armed criminals here than they have over there. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, you know what, maybe that's what we need because police officers are just proving time and time again that they they can't be trusted with this stuff. Um, and and th this whole instance, even if what the police officers say is true, and I want to point out two different ways. Uh, okay, let's say the kid did try to steal your gun. He tried to steal your gun and was unsuccessful. Even if what you say is true, you don't shoot someone after you win the scuffle for your gun. You detain them. If he gets the gun, then maybe your partner shoots him, but if he was unsuccessful, why are you firing at the kid? Um, and, th but then, uh, and if what the police chief uh, you know, says is true, oh, you know those riot cops, they're from the county, they're not from the uh, uh, city police department. Well, okay, let's, let's say that's true. 
Like, that's how poorly you've debriefed them. Like, they mention the names of two reporters. The police chief immediately goes, oh, God, no, and knows, like, this shouldn't have happened. Like, that's how well-coordinated this is. These people in, you know, straight-up military gear, and some uh, vets have pointed out on Twitter from Bosnia, Afghanistan, and Iraq that these police are much more heavily armed than they ever were on patrol. These guys are walking around patrolling our streets, harassing these are the people that we've given this much responsibility and weaponry to, and they don't even know how to do their jobs, literally. Like, there's no communication. There's no coordination. It's basically just go keep the black folks in check. Like, you get the feeling that's the only mission these guys have been given. And well, the, it's disastrous. The, the police chief, um, he's quoted saying kind of he, he was urging kind of all of the officers and the SWAT teams to kind of abide by the law and kind of not, not overreact. A, you shouldn't have to urge the SWAT team. You should be telling them what to do. You don't just say, oh, would you please kindly actually kind of follow and enforce the law that you should be doing. That's part of your job. No, he's just kind of kindly asking them. It, it's just ridiculous. And just to your kind of point about British cops here, like with the American stereotype of the cop, kind of fat, beer belly, donut eating sort of cop. Over here, hardly any of our cops carry guns. Okay, our SWAT team does. That's. You know, that's a certainty, but most of our on-the-beat cops don't carry a gun. But if you act out, they'll chase you down, and they'll beat the shit out of you sort of thing, but only if you're running away. But they're not going to kill you. That, that, that's why they don't have guns. That's why we don't have any cops shooting in teenagers. It's just... Can I just... Can I just add one point, and it kind of explains a little bit? The reason the cops don't have guns in Britain is because the last time law enforcement was given arms... The king was beheaded, and the government was overthrown and replaced by a dictatorship under Oliver Cromwell. That's part of the reason why they don't have guns today. <laughs> is because the people completely overthrew a government, and not <laughs> so. That's why law enforcement is not allowed to carry guns. At least it's one of the main reasons behind it, and why they're so afraid of changing that rule. Okay, Sean, let's get back to the story. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but the, uh, that was uh, insulting, sir. Uh, <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> but uh, oh man, I lost my train of thought now because uh, Stephen did point out something that was oh oh yeah well Stephen okay so talking about that like so yeah Stephen is you know quick to point out like maybe there are still instances of police brutality uh, in England, um, but it, it, this is this used to be true even of riot police in the U.S. You know like in the civil rights era. Um, you know, we've got, I, we grew up with history images of people getting, you know, water cannoned and pushed and pushed down and beat on, but but that was where it stopped, right? Like, like the, the killing, and then obviously there were some police killings, I'm not saying there weren't, let's let, you know, bounds of reason. But generally speaking, th this idea of where we're not in quote-unquote tumultuous times like we were in the civil rights era, just day to day, the number of police killings that are sketchy or shady, they just keep going up, going up. There's been two or three, you know, this week that have made national news. That's not counting all the ones that didn't make national news. Um, yeah, and uh, it's there's true. an interesting stat out there, actually, uh, if, if I could uh, interrupt you for a second there. An interesting stat that uh, I read is that um, on average, there are 28 black men that are killed a day in America, I believe by police. Now, you can fact check me on that. And I, and I urge you to. If I got that wrong, please let me know. Well, uh, so per day. back to kind of uh, where I was going with all that is like, e even as scary as it looks, and, and as much as it still does open the door for overreaction, like whenever you have cops in riot gear with batons and shields, like they've got skin in the game, right? Like they're they're less likely to overreach and, and get too aggressive because they're right there. They're within arm's reach. They're face to face with the crowd. Whenever you give them armored personnel carriers and sharpshooters and marksmen and put them, you know, 25, 30 yards away from the crowd and they just train their guns on the crowd, there's no fear of repercussion uh, because they, they can't fight back. The crowds have no way to defend themselves. It, it's about it's about smart policing. I mean, here when we had the riots back in 2012, you know, we had water cannons, we had kind of riot shields and everything that the cops were using, but you know, they didn't have guns. But if you don't have guns, you know. To your point, you know, you have to think about better ways to try and manage people. So there's a tactic that was used here in the UK by the police called kettling, where you just enclose kind of hundreds, possibly thousands of people just into a really small area and you just contain them there and you just make them sit there for hours and hours and they wouldn't be able to leave that spot and eventually kind of quell down any particular violence that was kicking off. And that was a really effective tactic. 
But, you know, you give someone a gun, you just get, oh, I can point it at them and that will scare them off. It just takes away any thought away from actually doing their job. That's the issue.